opportunity to give you praise, honor, and the glory. We are live. This is Elder Anton Seals of AJS Ministry, along with um, Elder Jennifer Seals, who's not on right now. But we thank God for her and cover her in traveling mercy. And to all of you that are on, Sister Willa May, Sister Charlie May, Sister Emma, um, and uh, Sister Naomi, I think it's, I don't know if she's gotten on yet, Brother Stanley Nevels. So all of you that are in the class and some that are not on, Brother James, Brother Clarence, may the peace of God continue to be with each one of you. This, this week, our lesson is such a powerful lesson, such a great lesson about the power of God. And, and we're talking about the purpose of his presence, the purpose of God's presence. So Father, we invite your presence. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. We welcome you into our lives. We welcome you into everything that we're doing. We pray that you are being glorified, that you are being exalted, that you know in our hearts, God, we bow down and worship you. What is the purpose, the purpose of your presence? It's to set us free, to deliver us, to heal us. So God, your purpose is to use us for your glory. So perfecting us a clean heart and a right mind. And for those that are listening, oh God, send your comforting angels, oh God, those are that work, those that are dealing with stressful situations, those that have faced death in their families suddenly or a long-term illness or just a person been fortunate to live a long time and God's called them home to be absent from the bodies to be present with the Lord. But I plead the blood of Jesus, God, that you would send your comforter right now to touch every family member that's suffering, every family member that's grieving and renew and restore their hearts for you are our comforter. And so God, we thank you that you hide us in the midnight hour, even in the time of trouble, you hide us under the shadow of your wings. And so, God, I thank you that we have a hiding place in you, O oh God, where you strengthen us, O oh God, that you fill us up, O oh God, that you quicken our spirits and remind us that we can do all things according to Christ Jesus, who strengthens you and I, all of us, if you can just call on the name of Jesus, if there's ever a time that we need Christ in our life, there's ever a time we need to see the manifestation of answered miracles and signs and wonders, it's right now. If there's ever a time for a breakthrough spirit to take over, it's right now. If there's ever a time to touch senior citizens and young and old and all in between, oh God, whatever age, God, show yourself strong and mighty to the world, oh God. How However you do it, God, we'll be mindful, for we're looking for the presence of the Holy Spirit, that cloud, that spirit, that rushing wind. Whatever you send, oh God, the encampment of angels all around you, keep you in the hollows of his hand and bless you and open your high eyes, your eyes, your eyes to see the beauty of his holiness and the greatness of what God has done, the splendor of his majesty, of his creation. And you are included in that creation. You're created in his image and likeness. And so you're precious. Hallelujah and you are a treasure in the name of Jesus. God bless you. God bless you. And welcome this morning. This is Elder Anton uh, Jennifer Seals. And we thank you. God bless you, Sister Willa May, who you see on the screen. And, and all of those who we don't see, including those that are live with us on Facebook that are on phone. Uh, we want to thank you this morning as we continue to grow. We are in our ninth week, believe it or not. Eighth week. Yes, this is the ninth week. Oh, my God. It is the ninth week. And, and, and I'm sitting there talking and haven't pulled up the lesson on my screen because I sent it to you all. But I am excited by this lesson as I am every week and so grateful to God because I know that this is the work of God. I know this is the will of God concerning us. Um, and so I just want to, you, all of you to be encouraged and know that God is doing a new thing in each one of you. So don't be discouraged. Uh, know that we're in the presence of God, even in this lesson right now that we're getting into. Why? Can't we find a win family and friends to the Lord? That question uh, really rocked me. It, it, it really <laughs> it hit me hard. I don't know about anybody else that wants to make a quick comment on that. But I took that very personable because it made me realize how much more there is that we need to do to be pleasing in the sight of God. Because uh, our families oftentimes... Uh, like us, we, we weren't always perfect. We weren't always what we should have been for Christ. Uh, but I want you to know that 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 God says he will He will answer our cries and our prayers if we just lean not to thine own understanding and all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. So I am so grateful for what God is doing in, in, in your life. 
in my life through this class. Uh, and so if anybody wants to make a response to that, uh, I'd like to hear how you took this question of, of why is it that, that we can't seem to draw people to God? Did anyone else take that in a very personable way or personal way that you began to realize, well, maybe there's more that I need to do in my behavior. Maybe, maybe God, Lord, I need you to show up even the more. No, no, maybe. God, I need you to show up. I need you to take over in my life, Father. I, I need your presence, oh God, to heal the land, oh God, and do it for your glory, that people, oh God, will come to know you as we do, oh God, and come to, to search the more for you, be like the dead that panteth after the water, because maybe we don't have enough of your presence, and that's what this lesson is all about, the presence of God, the presence of God, and, and so I just want to uh, uh, just get into this lesson, because Tommy Tenney, the author of this book that we've been studying now for nine weeks, The God Chasers, uh, focus this week, the purpose of his presence. What is his presence? What is the purpose of his presence? Well, what is the presence of God? It's the spirit of the living God. It comes by hearing and hearing what? The word of God is faith because we don't have enough presence. In other words, we need more of the bread. We need more of the Holy Ghost. We need more of the, the living spirit of God. We need his, his presence to saturate the atmosphere where you are living, where you are working, where you are walking, wherever you are, that there's an overflow of his presence. So when you come away from praying, that people will know that you're in the presence of God, that you, you've been working all day and, and, and working and slaving and, and, and sacrificing to do everything you can for the glory of God. And yet it never seems to be enough. But I want you to know uh, that's our mind that gets in the way. So there's three types of evangelism as we're going to talk about today that Tommy talked about Tommy Tenney, the pastor Tommy Tenney, the God chaser, who wrote the author, the God chaser. I want you to look at, if you will, if you don't mind, I want us to look at uh, page 166, 170, 176, I'm sorry, page 176. If you would go there uh, with me, uh, I just want you to notice that in there, and I highlighted this so that you could see it, it says it is underlined. First, there's the, the typical program of evangelism. And evangelism always represents the spreading of the good news, spreading of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It, it, it is the word that, that we go forth to spread. He says, go into all the world, spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ, okay? And so we find that, that, um, uh, that, that understanding of what it means is spreading the gospel to the public, spreading the gospel to, to the world. And so we're, we're in this place where we're searching for the more of Jesus, and we're asking God if he would touch our hearts and our minds. And, and I want to read this scripture to you, uh, Mark 16 and 15. And he said unto them, go ye into all the world, and preach the gospel every creature. How do you teach what you don't know? How would you teach it what you've never experienced? Um, and then verse uh, Romans 10 and 10, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with mouth confession is made. So our salvation comes by getting people to know that we have to confess. We have to first, we have to surrender to God. We have to surrender to God. Let me say that again. We have to, there's a desire. God is always calling us. In fact, he knows the appointed time that you and I are going to come to him. So evangelism is spreading the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. And so I just want, want us to search the more uh, for these kinds of understanding is what is what is God saying to you about evangelism? What is how does how do you see yourself being used by God uh, to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ? Mm. And, and that's part of our assignment. Our assignment is to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. And, and so, Lord, I'm, I'm on, the, on the class, sweetheart. Okay. Elder Seal, sweet. All right. And so I just want all of us to know that as we get into this spreading the gospel, I had to answer that. That's, that was my wife. Forgive me uh, for the interruption. Um, but I, I just want all of you to know 
I know why she did that, because I didn't send her the link, probably. Uh, but Father God, in the name of Jesus, this evangelism, this spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ, it, it is the word of God. It is the presence of God. And so he calls this first one uh, evangelism of knocking on the doors, where it's programmed, where there's an established agenda um, that, that we go out and we pass tracks out. And we're talking to people about Jesus Christ. We're, we're sharing with people and we may be witnessing with people. Then he calls the next one, the power of evangelism, the power of spreading the word of God. And so what, what is he saying to us is that uh, according to John Wimber says that this is a mixing of the, the program, the standardized, the traditional of going out in the community, passing out tracks, talking about Jesus, and, and going with an anointing, but going with just, a, and maybe stopping to pray with people and witness to people, of course. But then he says, there's another level, another level, another level of evangelism that he calls, and Tenney calls, Pastor Tenney calls, the presence of evangelism, which is something that happened. Something happens when there's the presence of evangelism because the evangelism or evangelists are going for spreading the gospel. The disciples, you and I are called to be disciples. We're called to be children of God. We're called to be his servants. We're called to be uh, believers are called also to be saints. Uh, you refer to in the Greek, the word servants in, in Greek means servant. Uh, ministry means service. Um, and so when you sometimes you see the word saint, it also means the believers, because when you die and you go to heaven prayerfully, we all with this, get the glory to God, and wear that crown and, and stand around and praise God, amen, and worship and adore him. And so, so part of this lesson is understanding that something's missing. And what's missing in the world is the presence. And you remember a couple of weeks ago, we talked about the kabod, uh, the glory cloud of God. We talked about the Ichabod, the departing of the spirit of God that's in the world to die today. Where, where um, last week or on Halloween week, there were two people that were killed. There were 11, of, uh, 11 people got, sh uh, 13 people were shot. Two people died. Um, and, and so this, this spirit of murder is in the atmosphere because we have fallen so far away from God that, and the media is so available because of technology. Uh, if you went back to 2011, uh, um, when we had the, uh, uh, the falling of, of, what was that, 201, 20 years now, I think, um, when, when the World Tower Centers and, and the Taliban had flew their planes, our planes into those buildings and uh, almost 4,000 people died. The point is that this, if, if they had had technology, we'd have seen what we're seeing now would have been even quadrupled because the information of technology is moving so fast, is shaping the minds of people towards a worldly view, absence of the presence of God absence of the presence of God. What he's saying is, is that to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ, we need to be in the presence of God. And so he goes on and he says, and I got a scripture that I used last week, and it talks about 1 Samuel 4, 21, and she named the child Ichabod. And I want us to know that there is a spirit of the departing of the spirit in the world today, because people have far, fallen further and further away from church, and because of the pandemic and because many, many churches did not believe in using this technology for uh, their churches and, and some could not afford it. Uh, but because of the pandemic, we find we are using, and even for myself, I never talked before the pandemic this much on, on live uh, um, media, internet. I had podcasts before, the blog talk radio, but to get on and teach every week, and I've taught class, but, but not like this, not to the open public through Zoom. That was a whole new beginning this year. Uh, even though I had been on Zoom calls, I had never taught and did conferences and workshops, even for jobs, I, I was used to that because I worked for the federal government. So this was not just totally new, but it hit the world that we're now spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. Something happened. Something's happening right now where there's a missing, there's an absence of the presence of God 
And so I just want us to begin to realize as, as we're growing in this word and studying this word and, and seeking the more of, of Christ Jesus, I, I just want us to be able to recognize the move of God, the power of God and what he's doing in our lives. And this scripture that I gave you, Acts 4.13, now then that they saw the boldness of Peter. So what, what Tenney was doing now is he's showing us through this lesson, through the teaching of this word, um, that he's showing you and I that, mm, I didn't realize my camera was on, on mute. Um, and so, so what he's saying to us through Acts, now then we saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uh, uh, unlearned and ignorant. They marveled that they took knowledge of them, that they had been with Jesus, that they have been with Jesus. So, so we know now that this power of the Holy Spirit was manifested. It was manifested in uh, Peter and John. And God is saying through us in the word, when I say God, I'm talking about the Holy Spirit. I'm talking about Jesus. I'm talking about the triune God. I'm talking about the leading of the Holy Spirit that's with us right now, that's present with you and I this very moment. And so when, when we're listening and learning about the will of God, the presence of God, we, we're also discovering that we need to be in his presence more and more. It, it's, it's like when you, when, if you don't shave, if you don't curl your hair, if you don't press it, you're not going to look right. You're not going to feel right. But the more you take care of yourself, the better you're going to feel. The more you you um, eat of this word, if let me say it that way, eat of this word, the more God will give you revelation. If, and, and it has to begin with understanding the presence of God. There's some requirements that God gives us. And one of them is, is that we have to be willing to sacrifice and give up something to spend time with God in the Bible study, in your daily devotion, in your prayer life, because that's what's missing in the world today. But I don't want, I don't want us to leave today or people listening to this to, to have a negative spirit about this lesson. I want you to realize that you have access to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I, I want to say that again. You have access to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And I pray that, that you and I can feel and see and know that the living presence of God is moving in our lives, even right now, even as we're on this podcast, even as we're uh, moving forward to do the will of God, to teach his word, to, to be on, to study with one another, the people that you don't know, that maybe you're listening to it on Facebook, but we want to get that, that spirit and understand that what Peter and John and the other disciples experienced, God has made a way for us through the renting of the veil in Jesus that, that this power of his presence is called the Holy Spirit, the paraclete, uh, the, the kabod of God, which is the glory of God, and his glory of God has to manifest. And so we want not just to have an anointing that I can sing well, that I can talk well, that I want you to feel the presence of God. I, I want people to be drawn to know that in spite of what it looks like, that we serve an awesome God and that, that all that you've been through, if, you, if you're 70 years old, 60 years old, 30 or 80, 90 years old, God is not through with you and God has so much more for us that he wants to use you for his glory. And so he tells us in, in Acts, and it's important to understand that the Acts, the book of Acts brings about the revelation of God's grace the grace of God when Jesus died on the cross and in the, in the New Testament, in the gospel, after Jesus rent the veil, the day he hung on the cross on a tree for you and I, hallelujah, that he rent the veil. And so we have direct access. Hmm. I, I want you to hear that. I want you to know that you have direct access to God Almighty. And I want you to be in the, to know that you're in the will of God and the presence of God and the glory of God is moving in your life, in our lives, even as we speak. And so I'm just grateful that, that we can now say with a boldness, I want us to read this scripture. If you have your Bible open, I want you to read this scripture that, that is 
or Acts 4, and where it says now they saw the boldness of Peter and John, I want you to personalize this. I want you to put your name in there. I want you to know that if you spend enough time with God, that people will feel a shifting in your spirit. They'll see a change in your behavior. Because when you have a thirsting for God, a thirsting for Jesus, a thirsting and wanting to, to experience the comforter of the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit that comes and he sends it as a comforter, I want you to feel that experience and other people come to know it in spite of your journey, in spite of the pain and the rejections and, and the persecution and the bitterness and all the stuff that you may go through. We want you to know that God says, I want, I've given you this boat. I, I'm giving you to step out on the, and step on the Addis head. I'm giving you power to do great attributes. God bless you, Elder Genesis. Is great, beautiful face this morning. But as we talk about the power, God bless you, Brother James. We're talking about the power uh, uh, of the glory of God that's moving in our lives, even as we're teaching this class, even as you're listening. We're, we're like dear. We want each one of you, each one of us, we want we want the more of Jesus. It's not enough just to be in the presence. I want to be in his presence, but I want to feel it. I, I want to walk away knowing that I've been close to God. I don't want a life as normal. So I'm looking for change and, and, and I'm looking for an increase. I'm looking for a breakthrough in my spirit that I can do all things through Christ in Jesus. That I'm looking and believing God by faith. And all this is by faith because faith is, is the word of God. So when we read this and, and listen to what uh, Tommy Tim it is really teaching us, and we go back and begin to exegete God's word. It says the presence of evangelism. What are you spreading? Is the good news of Jesus Christ, and so you're spreading the word, which is a seed that once it gets into other people, because it's into you, and you keep feeding them, and you keep spreading the word, you keep going back and watering, and you keep going back and digging up and planting more seeds, and your behavior begins to change, and people want to see, well, how did this happen? How did these blessings? It's not about just the blessings. You can have all the blessings and the riches of the world and be a sin soul, sick soul, going to hell, a dressed up looking Christianity is a, is a show, and God is not not receiving that. He's, he's tired of it. And so he's saying to the world, return unto me. Return unto me. So that boldness that Peter and John had, that, that's available to you and I. That God is, and I'm going to show you through this whole lesson today, that he goes on and he says, perceive that they were unlearned and ignorant. See, people can look at you and say you're ignorant. This has nothing to do with how many degrees you got. This has to do with your intimacy with God. This has to do with your intimacy with God. It has to do with your relationship. And I must turn in sincerity of a passion of love that you have. Do you adore God? You don't just go to God and ask him for stuff, but do you really worship him and adore him and magnify? Oh, God, we magnify your name. How majestic is your name? Oh, glory be to your name, God. We thank you just because you're God and God alone. We worship you and we adore you because you're the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Lord, if it had not been for you, where would we be? Lord, I know we don't deserve the blessings that you give us, but thank be to God that you're God that loves us unconditionally. That's what Peter and John had this understanding, but they had to wait on the Holy Ghost. And Paul also, who was Saul that was converted, had, had a, a quickening of the Holy Spirit that the disciples didn't have. And, and that was amazing because he met him on Damascus Road. And so we, they had not got to the, to the, to the uh, upper room experience. But Paul had an experience. Silas got changed. You can get a change right now by the word of God, by the presence of the Holy Spirit. And so he goes on, he says, marvel that they have knowledge, took knowledge of them that they have been with Jesus. I want people to begin to realize that you've been in the presence of God, that when we're in this class, we humble ourselves, we bow before you, we worship and adore you, God. We come with a repentive spirit, Father. We come uh, repenting, oh God. We come to bow down and say thank you. We come to say, God, I'm heartily sorry. We come with a confessing heart. We come searching for more for God. Give us a contrite heart in the name of Jesus that, that, that we 
we can declare the leading of the Holy Spirit because we're believing like Peter and John and the other disciples that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And they called them and commanded them not to speak. So you got to get a situation like Paul and Peter where you don't want to speak up for truth. Mm, that's what's missing. We, 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 we live in a world right now, there's so much misinformation that there are people and algorithms that are being used, artificial intelligence that's being used to program who you listen to based on what you're looking at on your screen. And it has nothing to do how many people you got, it's the consistency of what you watch. And so the world has shifted this technology that, that top researchers and data companies, they've come up with a plan that they can look at what you're looking at on your phone and at your, in your, on your uh, computers and what you're looking at in your screen on television. And they can program what kind of product you're going to buy. They're going to watch and see what, if you're watching some, some filthy movies, that's what you're going to get more of. If you go to TikTok, TikTok is nothing wrong with TikTok. It's depending upon the mind of the people that's watching it. And so once you begin to watch and, and deal with TikTok, the more you skirt past all the filth and all the other craziness, and you go into searching for biblical text, and you go into listen for a word of God, and you go into something that's talking about wellness, and healing and deliverance and things of that nature, then what the algorithms do, the presence of God is like an algorithm above all algorithms. It has programmed you to do what's right because he called you the righteous of God. <laughs> the technology of the world and the God's, the mind of God that's in you is greater than anything else in the world. Because the mind of man that created this technology does not supersede the mind of God, because God did everything for his glory. And you, the prime reason of creation was you. Everything was created to bring glory to God, but he placed you to be the steward, to be the gardeners, to be the sowers, to be the, 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 the harvesters. All of these things that he's done that I'll even put you in and let you be in a desert and I'll put a pond of water and oasis and palm trees all around you. I'll meet your every need. There's no problem too hard for God. But Peter and John answered and they called them and then them not, and they told them not to speak, but Peter and just like we're doing right now, we're going forth with this word. And we're saying no matter what people say, we're going to speak truth. We're going to stand on the, on the solid rock. And so he goes on and says, Peter and John answered said to them, whether it be right in the sight of God and hearken uh, unto you or more unto God. In other words, am I going to give way to the things of the world, to the pleasures of, of, of society, to the pleasures of my natural physical self? Or am I going to be willing to sacrifice uh, the time uh, to, to be on the broadcast? Am, am I going to sacrifice the time to do some studying? Am I going to set aside time to be in a class to go forth and study? There? Am I going to take time to spend time with God? God don't want you to just keep asking for blessings. He's in the blessing business. And if you know him, you don't have to ask him. Because if you know him and you're doing his will, he's going to bless you. <laughs> That's his word then I'm going to pour you out a blessing that you won't have room in to just be about my father's business. Be about the business of God. And if we're doing his will and his plan, then you have to take another shift off. We cannot put things, speak things which have not been seen and heard. We can't speak what we don't know. So the only way you can learn is being in the presence of God, that he give you first revelation and new knowledge. Put your phones on mute if you're moving around. And so, so the spirit of the living God that was in Peter, and John and these disciples, it's available in you. The presence of God is available to each one of us. And so I, I want you to know that in this lesson, this presence, he calls divine uh, radiation. I, I got dividing, but it's divine radiation zones. And so that it, I, I refer to it, uh, the radiation meaning that it's, it has an effect. It has an everlasting effect. But I just use the manifestation of God's presence. The manifestation and the fullness of God's presence in our lives. It is a believing, it is the believing and the faith of people who are believers to be in the presence of God and the hunger for the more of the presence of God, that, that it begins to affect everyone around you. 
that's on the bottom of your handout on page one, that, that we're saying to you, that is the manifestation. What is the divine radiation zone? He refers to as Tenny, uh, Pastor Tenny, in the God Chaser book, is when the residue of God is on a person. When the residue of the Holy Spirit, the manifestation of God's glory is manifest, the manifest I mean, it, it, it becomes visible, it becomes tangible. It's no longer something that you talk about. You begin to see the evidence of it. Amen. And so that's the beauty of God, that his presence on you, in you, through you, and all around you begins to manifest. It brings forth fruit. It brings forth love. It brings forth joy and peace and long suffering. You're able to go through the difficulties of life, and he restructures and renews you and strengthens you. The valley of the shadow of death that he prepares for you. Did you ever understand that he said, I prepare a table for you in the, in the presence of your enemies? In other words, I know your enemy is going to always be with you. There are going to be things in the world that you're going to fight. But he says, I want you to know that I'm with you. And the more we acknowledge and reverence the holiness of God and adore him and meaning love him and reverence his holiness and sincerity of our hearts, we should begin to see the change. And so the visible, invisible manifestation of the presence of God is what Tommy Tenney was trying to get us to hear. And in the Old Testament, it talked about Exodus 24 and 16. I, I love teaching Old Testament and New Testament. So that's the parables, the relationship, the connection between the foreshadowing of the coming of, of Jesus and the presence of Jesus. And I went back through the Kabbad and the and actually uh, in the Greek, and I listened to it again last night, it's Kabbad, uh, Kabod, but Kabbad, Kabod, Kabbad, um, uh, it's, it's the glory of God. It's the heavy weight of the glory of God. And the glory cloud, Exodus 24, 16, and the glory of the Lord abode on Mount, uh, on Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it for six days. And on the seventh day, he called out unto Moses in the midst of the cloud, then a cloud covered the tent of the congregation. The glory cloud of the Lord filled the tabernacle. And Moses was not able to enter into the tent of the congregation because the cloud abode above it and the glory cloud filled the time. He couldn't move until, the, until God tells you to move. You can't even today when you're in the presence of God, he'll shut everything down so that that he has your full attention. And, and it's so powerful that all you can do is either cry or dance and shout or weep. And the tears don't have to be tears of sorrow. It may be that, that you were in prayer and you were suffering and he's brought you through. He's healed you from cancer and you're waiting on the doctor's report, but you already believe in your heart. You're believing the, 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 the power of God because he said, ask, and you've been asking faithfully. And he said, ask with the measure of a faith, the size of must see. But what the mustard seed is, is the word of God that you're believing that the presence of his glory outweighs everything else and it cancels out all the sickness and the disease and the suffering and the bitterness and the unforgiveness. He erases all of that. He cleanses us out of that. And so the purging that goes on in your life and the suffering that you go through draws you closer to God. And the glory cloud of God is covering us right now. He said, I abode in the dark cloud. I'm in the presence of the Holy Ghost. The presence of God in the white cloud was to give you direction in the daytime. But the dark cloud represents presents God in his presence in a dark, sinful world. God in his presence in the dark, sin world, for shallowing the coming of Jesus so that you would see the coming of Jesus, and it was being prophesied all through the Old Testament. And the word manifested. And the word was, the word was a seed. It was a thought. Your thought is a seed. Your thought of your business, the thought of your forgiveness, the thought of, of loving your children and, 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 and correcting them and wanting the best for them, the more you get into that thought of what God has given you and you allow God to, to transform you and give you wisdom, the glory of God shifts you. It's, it's like being in a shifter and, and the glory of God begins to move on your life that it separates us. That's what salvation is not just a one-time hit and then I'm saved 
for the rest of my life. No, you've got to go through a process every day of your life that we have misinformed people that once saved, always say that that's between you and God, but your behavior and your attitude and your spirit, God is the only one that really knows if you're saved and sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost. He's not talking about because you come to church every Sunday. He's talking, where's that love of God in your heart? Where's the forgiveness in us? Where's the willingness to help somebody, to encourage others? I, I watched in tragedy what happened in Texas at the Astro World, and, and it grieved my spirit that I and 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 when I when I realized that the show never stopped, and people, what was going on that was drawing people to the front of the stage? You have that many people, the young people, and and some older people but primarily young people and, and children, eight people die, trampled, crushed. To, for what? To get to see what? What was drawing these people that were there for entertainment? Can you imagine if we had 50,000 people that would come together to worship God? I command in the name of Jesus, I decree and a clarion call to the body of Christ. Can we come together as a people, regardless of your denomination, and come together for the glory of God and stop being so selfish and self-centered and so righteous that we can come together just to pray and worship more than 15 and 20 minutes, but do just pray and worship and, 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 and adore God. Can you imagine if we could get 15 more people on this prayer line, how many more people you can touch? If you can imagine that God would, would open up prayer lines where people are calling and, and the spirit of God is so full and so present that, that strangers are one that just like you stop and you see an accident and you, yeah, I, I know I'm nosy. I'm going to be looking. I'm trying to see what happened. What happened? I, wanna, well, I want you to imagine if, if Jesus showed up in your church with such an, a powerful quickening and the manifestation of his word that is being spoken, that's being moved, the spirit is moving and people are being delivered and the word is going out. That's something going on over there. Is something going over there. God is doing something over in Africa. God is doing something over in India. God is doing something over in China. God, wherever God is doing something in your house. Can we imagine? Ooh, that the invisible, invisible God shows up in you because you are his word. He gave you the word and we're spreading the word. The kabod translated means the, the glory, the honor, the, the magnificence, the dignity, the splendor, the glory of God. It's the beauty of everything that you see of his presence and everything that he made. You may not see the same beauty like I do. You, you may see the mountains and not be interested in the mountains, but maybe you're in the valley. Not in the valley of shallow depth, but you love the sceneries from a, from a different viewpoint. There are some people that they want to get to the top of the mountain to be able to look over the mountains. There are some that just want to go under the water, under the sea, and, and dive and see. And so we're searching for everything but God. The invisible image of God, he says, is, is, is who have delivered us from the power of darkness. See, see, there's a battle going on in the world. Those of you that are listening and trying to understand, it's the world, if you look at television, if you look at media, and you see so much anger, so much bitterness all day long, and you're an adult and you're working in that atmosphere, and you got teenage kids and elementary side, uh, 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 children and, and, and preschool and middle school and uh, uh, high school and now college and now working, what are they seeing? What are they being exposed to compared to the presence of God in their life? You're a spiritual being. And, and in order to sustain the holiness of God, you have to be in the perfecting work of God, which means you have to be in the perfecting presence of God. And the only way to get there is through Bible study and prayer and worship. See, we go to church looking for it there. And you get a little bit of it. But God is saying that's where you come to get filled up. But if your cup is already empty all the time, 
you're not going to get enough in a half an hour. And unfortunately, prayer is not the foundation of many of the churches. Actually, Bible class. I used to say if you go to a, a theology school, you, you come out there with a degree, but you have no intimacy with God. Mm. Because they're going to teach the letter of the word. The letter of the word killer. What do you mean, Brother Seals? That we've gotten institutionalized and know the word and don't know God. Mm. Let's move on. Colossians, God says he delivered us. Jesus says he delivered us. He said, who have delivered us from the power of darkness, translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Translate, transform. To move from darkness to negativity, to glory, to the presence, to love, to peace, to joy, to strength instead of weakness. It's not, it's not, a, it's not a weakness to have a, a compassionate heart. It's not a weakness to, to love people and to pray for your enemies. Ministers and pastors are called who, who really love God. You got to pray for people that, that you know are deceitfully misusing you. Because that's God. That's God in you. And he wants to come out. So I'm asking us to open our hearts. God showed in his presence of the glory of God uh, uh, that the presence of God in here, he says, who is the image of the invisible image of God? Let's go back to Colossians 1 and 15. God, Jesus, is the image of an invisible God. That's where you hear me get that from. It's the word of God. It's the spirit that he dressed it. The spirit of God is the spirit that, that has no being. It has no, no, no physical body. It's whatever he says I am, that I am, I am. <laughs> Television screen, computer screen, uh, your, your cell phone screen. I am made that. I am gave us the technology to create all this technology. The I am is God. The I am that gives you breath to breathe. The I am is the chair that I'm sitting in that if he decided to dissolve it, it could disappear and you fall on the floor. The I am that gives you breath, that decides when your time is up and you don't know when it's coming, that you could be sitting here right now and just be gone the next second in the twinkling of an eye or sooner than that. Because your, your brain could be dead and your lungs are still functioning, but the brain is gone. Or the heart is beating, but they got you on a respirator and a, and a, and a, and a pulmonary machine to pump your heart, your lungs, to, but, you, but your body's dead. Because God is gone. The spirit is gone. Your spirit. Eat of this word. Drink of this word. And you're hungry and thirst no more. And so let's go to 2 Kings. It says, but now bring me a minstrel. What he's saying to us, David was teaching us back in the Old Testament, Come and worship me. And it came to pass when the minister prayed that the hands of the Lord came upon him. So when you're in this place, see, there's a difference between having casual prayer on the run <laughs> and a, a casual Bible study. I'm talking about when you really have a passion and you really, I, I just, God, I just want to see the more of it. I, I want to see what, the, I want to experience more of the glory. That's what I'm trying to, that's what I want us to get. That's where I want you to be. I want you to experience the more of the glory of God. I want you to experience more of the joy. I want you to be able to apply this word that it becomes your equipment. It, it becomes your, 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 your helmet of salvation that, that keeps your mind. See, the helmet of salvation is, is being saved, having a saved mind, meaning I'm in the world, but I'm not of the world. I'm in the world, but I don't practice the nature of sin. I ain't running after nobody's woman. I'm not, I'm not gay. I just love God. I, I'm not a pedophile. I love God. I'm not trying to, to, to cheat nobody. That's what God is calling the world back to moral standards. That's what righteousness is. That we're trying to rewrite the Bible and tell people what you can, that, that, well, God, God is love. And if God is love, then I can do what I want because he's going to love me. You all need to stop that. That's a retrograde mind. You're trying to change what God has already ordained and the covenants that he's made for creation. And, and so I have to go there because that's truth. 
And too many of our young people are getting confused by this spirit of wickedness, the spirit of jealousy, the spirit of bitterness, the spirit of unforgiveness. Thus saith, uh, make this valley full of ditches. Here's This is what drew me to this particular scripture in 2 Kings 3 and 15. He said, first of all, I'm going to bring people together and I want you to worship. So I'm saying today in this class, I want us to take this 30 seconds, just begin to worship God. Thank God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let everything that have breath praise the Lord. Lord, we welcome you into, into the gates with thanksgiving. This court with prayer. God, we just adore you. We just manifest you. Lord, there's some, there, there's some attacks on our lives. And thus saith the Lord, make the valley full of ditches. Lord, we, we, we need some, we need you to, to overtake in our life. Take, take over. Turn it around. Lord, we welcome you. And we're on the battlefield of, of the Lord. We're in this world trying to do your will. And we don't know what always to do or what always to say. So Lord, fill us up. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the ditches that were being dug were, was to fill it up with water to show man that God does not have to be seen or heard. But they said that the Lord said to dig the ditches and he'll fill it up with water and you will not see the wind. You will not hear the rain. You will not hear the wind. You won't hear nothing, but you'll see the miracle. That's what faith is, because God said it. And he's saying to you in this lesson, thus saith the Lord, make this valley full of ditches. I want you to imagine that, that in you, there's some, there's some empty spots that you need God to fill up. That, 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 that ditch in you is a pain that you need God to deliver you from. That, 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 that sickness is an, is an affliction and, 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 and an enmity that, that we need God to, to eradicate, to wipe out, to cancel out, to root out. I don't need to hear you, God. I just believe you by faith. But let's say of the Lord, you shall not see the wind, neither see the rain. Yet the valley will be filled with water. I'm filling you with the water. In fact, I'll put the rivers of living water. I put my presence down in you. Know ye not that you are the tabernacle, that you're my meeting place, that I made you in my image and my likeness, and I filled you up with that everlasting living water. Ah, you don't have to dig no ditches. Call on my name and I'll fill you up. I'll give you a refreshing. I'll equip you. I'll renew your mind and put you on the right path. I'll turn the dark days to shiny days. I'll give you peace and rest at night. Lord, help me. Help me, Lord. Because Lord knows I struggle with sleep. Lord, deliver us right now, God, and use us for your glory. Usher us into that realm that you want us to be in. And in the world, we'll draw nigh to thee and thirst the more for you and run to come to know you. Not just for some gifts, but that your power and your glory and your healing grace and the touching grace and the blessings of the Lord that bring us through to change the world, the captivity of Zion. Turn it around, God. Turn the captivity of this evil presence that we're in in America and across the world, where people get so caught up that they're stampeding and stepping on people and won't even stop to help somebody. That's where we are. And God is saying, no, return unto me. And he delivered them. The Moabites are your enemies. Whatever your enemies, whatever your schisms are, whatever your sickness is, whatever your challenge is, that's a Moabite, the ites, those are the ites, those things that are holding you back, as, as my wife and I talk, what's, what's holding you back? What's holding us back is more obedience, because the suffering that you go through is just the making of what God is pulling off of you, and it's your test. I used to hate that, I always talk about it, it's your test. It's your time, but there's a season for all times. So let's go to page three. Jeremiah, and I and 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 am I a God at hand, saith the Lord, and not afar off? Can any hide himself in secret places that I shall not see you? See, it's the presence of God that Tenny was talking about just in this chapter, the purpose of his presence is that you would know that he's here, that I am not the, and what he said, excuse me, Jeremiah 23, can any, any hide himself? He is the secret place. Ain't no other secret. <laughs> Ain't no secret what God could do. You just don't understand how big a God we serve. He's an almighty God. Hallelujah. 
That's why I get excited by, by the shadow of his healing, that the presence of God and the, and the radiation of God or, or the, the, the manifestation of his glory, the fullness of his presence, the beauty of his holiness. That's what Peter passing, it wasn't Peter. If God is using us, it's not me, it's not you, it's God in us, and he's using us, so let's give him the glory. So that's what Tommy T is saying. Tinny is saying the shadow, the shadow is the same shadow that passed by the cleft when Moses was in the rock was the, was the presence of the glory of God. It's the light of God that shines, that gives the shadow of his presence in you. That, that the anointing in your life, the light that shineth on a hill, that he calls you to be the candle of the Lord. He calls you to be the pillar of strength in your community. Authority and power, that's why he calls you to be the king in your community, in your family. To be the steward of, of being able to manage what God has given us. And the apostles perform many signs and wonders among the people. See, we read this as this, this is for somebody else or just the apostle or just the pastor or just the, the, the prophet or just the evangelist or just the, the teacher. No, this is for mankind. This is God has gifted all of you with a measure of gift. That's what he tells us. And we'll cover some of that maybe next week in, in Corinthians, I think it's 12, where it talks about the different gifts that he gives us, even the gift of administration. That's just one gift. But there's so many different gifts, the gifts of help, the gifts of wisdom, the gifts of miracle. So everybody has a measure of a gift. But God, your faithfulness in God's word can lead people to come to know Jesus and want to know him so bad that their lives will be changed forevermore. And maybe through that action, they're not only saved, but they're healed, they're delivered. Because we don't know how God can use a wretch like us in his sight, unclean, unholy, in our self-righteousness. Mm. So Acts 5 and 12 goes on in verse 15. As a result, people brought the sick. So, so what happened is that the, the presence of God was with them. I can imagine what would happen if the presence of God shows up on this, on this class, shows up in your church. That the anointing of the presence of God, the, the rubbing on to when you're in the presence of God. The, 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 see, what, what Jesus did with the anointed, he was the anointed one. So the dove, which represents the presence of the Holy Spirit, is Jesus in the, in the spirit that now manifests in flesh. And they call him the Messiah because his word was going forth and he was no longer just a spirit, but he was a man. And he walked on this earth to give you and I examples of what we're able to do through Christ who strengthens us. That, that the presence of God, if there are enough people in your church begin to pray with sincerity and pastors, get out the way. Get out of the way because you cannot do it all. This ain't your church. This is God's church. And we want to restore the power in God's church. And the people have to return to know God for themselves. And pastors and ministers and people in the body and believers and clergy and wherever you are, you got to get people to, to the hunger for God and, and for the thirsting of the more of Jesus for themselves. That you cannot just say, give them something and tell them that's enough. You got to correct people and tell them, I can't pray for you if you ain't praying. I can pray for you. But if you're not going to pray, if you're not going to surrender, that's like me hitting my head against this brick wall. That's like running my head through a glass. If you're not going to pray and you want somebody to pray for you every week and you won't pray, that's out of order. And we need to say that to people because God is saying, what is he saying in this lesson? That my presence is already with you. You just don't know how to use it. My presence, God said, is already in you. 
You were made in my image and my likeness. I gave you dunamis power. I've given you the keys to the kingdom and called you stewards in the mysteries of God's word. The revelation of mystery of God's word is to know the word and be enlightened by the power of God's word, that the power of God that worketh in you will touch somebody else's life, and they, in turn, will touch somebody, and they, in turn, it's not you, but God is using you to be a blessing to somebody else. For the unction of the Holy Spirit is the quickening of the Holy Spirit, the, the presence of God that, that gives you clarity of what to say, what to do, where to go, when to go, how to do it. It'll have, uh, in, in, in Genesis, I think it was 24 or 25, when Moses called them together, he said that the Lord called and told him what to do and how to construct and how to take 75 pounds of gold and beat it into the candle. There was no machinery like we had today. They made things with their hands because God empowered them with knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Well, with wisdom to establish, for us to know how to do. All that get and get understanding. Mark 5 says, uh, 5 and 12, he says something happened in, in, at the, at, at the, at the um, uh, Gadara, um, the Gadarenes. Jesus got out the boat. It's the power of God's word, the power of the presence of Jesus in your life, the power of the presence of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit in your life, that he said, I can manifest miracles through you if you will only believe and, and the presence of God is in the living word, which is the Bible. And so when you begin to eat of this word, I'm going to give you revelation that tells you, if you can believe with the faith the size of a mustard seed, that I can use you to lead people to come to Jesus. I can use you in your prayer life that people will be healed. I can use you to go forth and spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. I can use you in establishing the presence of God in your life. So when you go out and to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ, you've been disciplined by my word, disciple, discipline, disciple. And by my word, you are a son of God who has studied the word of God, that has a, learn, a learner of God's word and his truth and his righteousness and you can, I'll lead you to people that I'm calling right now. I'll equip you to go where you need to go according to the will that God has for you, not my plan, but God's plan. He'll tap into it. He'll guide you to it. He'll use you and direct you, but he's a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path. That's why he calls you the candle, because when you're in his presence, the light of God gets in you. What Jesus did, he should doing what he saw God told him to do and what he saw, because he's God. What the disciples did is what Jesus learned from the Father, which is God. And what we're learning is what God has given us to, for me to share with you, that you can go help somebody else. Amen? Amen. And so the purpose, the purpose, oh my God, uh, time is getting away. The purpose of the manifest presence set the captives free. Isaiah 64, let me point out these things. So we only got about 10 minutes because we started at 307. So, so something happened in Gandhara. He said the step the Father, God, you allow God back in. Something has to happen in America. Something has to happen in your house. It can't happen in America unless it happens in your home. It can't happen in the church because the church is the body of Christ. So it's not the building. So it's not going to happen. God can't turn the world into we, the people, the believers, return to him with sincerity of heart, with dedication and commitment and perseverance. But you have the unction of the Holy Ghost. He said when, when Jesus stepped out the boat and came into the, 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 the country of the gathering. That, that the devil, the, 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 the demon, the, 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 the possessed demonic man named, called himself Legion, they said that he was a half a mile away, half four blocks away that, in, in modern time. But in the reading of this, it says that, that, that Jesus saw them and they saw Jesus a half a mile apart. And when the demon saw Jesus, 
the legion man, the legion man, the man called legion with 5,000 demons, saw Jesus and recognized the power of his word that they had to flee. So they ran to Jesus. He ran to Jesus with all these demons. And all this other time, he was never subject to anything or anybody. He could break chains off his hands. That's what, that's what demonic forces do. Demonic forces that's in this world today will make you shoot somebody 12 times, 15 times, and then lie about it the way they did a crime. Shoot a man for running because he's in your neighborhood, and, and three men are now in, and going to jail prayerfully that justice will be done. My God, because of the color of your skin. That's not God. That's not God, brothers and sisters. And we need to challenge the world to stand on God's word in your church and pray God turn it around for his glory. Isaiah 61 and 4. And this is for all of us. Isaiah was talking about uh, the Messiah, the coming Messiah. Now that the Messiah has come, who did he put the anointing on? Who did he put, who did he want to manifest his glory through? You, me, the world, a people, of believers. So this is not read, should not be read as what they did. It should be read to be applied to your life. That I said the spirit of the Lord is upon me. I want you to say that. I want you to believe that the spirit of God is in you, upon you, and all around you. Because he's omnipotent, omnipotent, omnipresent. He's an almighty God. And so if he's there, and he's here, and he's everywhere. Uh, he said that Jesus came the, uh, uh, to set the captives free. He came, but first look at what it says, Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. So if, you, if you've accepted Jesus Christ, you've already been anointed. In fact, you were born in his image and his likeness, so it was already put in you. It's just not manifest. It's not working. It's dormant. There's no movement of the Holy Spirit in you because you won't accept Jesus Christ, but his spirit is in you. Whether or not you confess Jesus or not, you were made and created in his image and his likeness. And so with that kind of power, tap into it and earnestly ask God, Lord, how, how can I be pleasing in thy sight? How use us for your glory, God. Then he goes, what he says, listen, we talked about the demons saw him. They saw the power of God, the light of God, the strength of God, the love of God. And they didn't want to be tormented because they represented evil in the world. And the demon said to him, the 5,000 that he represented, send us into the, into the swine so that you don't persecute us, Jesus. Because when you're, when you're in the presence of God, your enemies know. Your family knows that there's a shifting in you. They know that the spirit of, they may question and challenge you because how can that man teach like that, preach like that, pray like that, live like that, and never be healthy? That's a battle that I fight every day. And I'm delivered in the name of Jesus. I speak healing and deliverance in the name of Jesus. I speak breakthroughs in the name of Jesus. I speak miracles and signs and wonders. Let it begin in my own home. Lord, for the glory that you just fill us up, oh God. We don't have no ditches, but we got some holes in us that need filling. We got some pain that we need delivered from. That come to preach good tidings. I'm preaching good tidings. I'm telling you that if we, I'm sharing with you. I'm, I'm, I'm informing you. I'm beseeching you, brothers, that this word is for you and it's already in you. I just want you to turn the key a little bit and let Jesus come on in some more. The more you turn the key, the more you open your doors and your heart. He's standing there knocking, saying, "Let me in. Let him in all the way. Don't be peeking around the corners to see. You know it's God trying to change your life. Preach good tidings to the meek." That's the people that are humble. That are the people that, that, that are searching for the more. They're living right, but don't and, and haven't accepted Jesus. But they, but they may have a spirit of meekness, of kindness, and gentleness. That some of us who love God, we can be so evil and so angry and so jealous and so self-controlling and so self-righteous that, that there's, there's no meekness in you. You think you are. We think we are. We all fall short of the glory of God. 
He has sent me to bind up the broken heart. Binding up the broken heart, it means that I have allowed you to, to, I have broken you. God is breaking you from some stuff. If you're going through some experiences in your life that you don't understand, it's because God is trying to show you something and show you another way. He's trying to enlighten you. And the pressures that you're going through is meant to draw you closer to God because he's the only one that can really give you the satisfying answer that you need, that you're hungry and thirst for nothing else. You won't look for no other man, no other woman, no gimmicks, no nothing else. You just want the fullness of God to fall fresh on you. That's why this lesson whooped my butt. It whooped me bad. Whoop me. I was bleeding. <laughs> In my spirit, I was hurting because, Lord, I felt like I wasn't doing enough. I felt like, God, why my family don't believe? He said, they, it's not that they don't believe. You just continue doing what I'm telling you to do. And as, as he brings you through, he'll bring them through. Your children are being blessed. He may not bless them the same way you bless you. He may not deliver them the same way he delivered you. But deliverance is at hand even right now. But the seed of God's word is going to accomplish what he sent it to do. Amen. So he says, preach good time and proclaim the liberty for the captives in the opening of the prisons. Lord, open it. Send justice. Let justice rain down from heaven. I can't go through all the scripture texts. The planning of the Lord that he might be glorified. The planning of the Lord is the spreading of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That your feet are shouted in the preparation of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's the planning of the glory of God that's manifested because you're doing the work of God. He gets the glory. Let's go to page four real quick. Lost, Lord, 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 number eight. Lord, we want to see you. We, when, you are, when, when are you going to show up, Lord? Pastor Brother Tenney, he says in his book, I pray that when we say with the prophet, I've seen the Lord, I'm praying for a cooperative breakthrough. See, we got to pray for cooperative breakthroughs. We got to pray for breakthroughs in our family. But first, I pray God get each one of us an individual breakthrough so we can pray for everybody else. But don't forget yourself. Sometime intercessors and teeping in Bible study, you forget that this word goes for you. That it's for you first. You got to get it down inside of you. You have to be delivered. You got to be cleaned up. It's an ongoing life journey, but he allows you, he positions you and puts you in place. Then he uses you to, for his glory to bring the comfort, comfort, comfort to people that are, that are hurting, comfort to people that are suffering and crying and weeping and wailing because their children went to school and never came home. They went to a, a, a party and they never come home. They went to a concert and they sat on the porch and never came back in because evil is in the world and too many people that go to church won't pray and too many people that know of God won't have a relationship of intimacy with God and that's why the world is in the shape it's in because we've been playing with God and nobody wants to tell the truth about it enough that we get hungry for the nature of God, for the spirit of God, for the love of God, thirst the more for God. Turn that television off and the wickedness that's in it. Mm. Ebenezer, Ebenezer, the story of Ebenezer. Ebenezer in the Bible represents the stone of help. Huh. <laughs> when the Boabites was coming against the children of Israel, and the king went to and prayed before God, and, and he told them as a, as a sacrifice to, 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 to make an altar, and they called that place Ebenezer, the stone of help. And we turned it into a movie of the Grunch and all that kind of stuff, the Grinch, whatever it is. Lord, we, we are not coming just to get a blessing. We're coming to seek you. That's what we're here for. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down before him. Psalms 95 and 6. Oh, come, we bow down before you, God. We bow down. Let us kneel before you. Let us worship and adore you, God. And Lord, you are our maker. You are our everything for us. You are our God, and we are your people. We are your pasture. Lord, we, you, you, we are your sheep, and the sheep is at hand, oh, God. We, we are calling on you right now, God. Your children are calling you. Today, if you will hear his voice. We are his sheep. We are his children. You're his sons and his daughters. Matthew 6 and 31 to 34. I'm just going to read the one that's probably the most prevalent. Wherewithal we are clothed for all the things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly father know that you have need of. Seek ye first what? The kingdom of God and his righteousness. All these things will be added unto you. 
What are those things? The love of God, the peace of God, the strength of God, the light of God, unforgiveness, and on and on and on. It's more than, it's the fruit of the spirit and it's endless because you're the fruit and you're to bear more fruit. And he's divine and we're the branch and so he prunes us. The pruning is the pain and the suffering you go through and he keeps putting you back in the fire until they get it right. But he knows how much you can bear too. Psalms 51, he created me a clean heart. Clean, a clean heart. Tenny says we need a breakthrough. He warns us. I see another typo. But he warns us that you will be broken. If, if you want a breakthrough, be careful what you ask for. If you want wisdom, then you're going to go through some situations where you got to know how to make a decision. And you got you to listen to the leading of the Holy Spirit. You, 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 you want more money? Then you're going to have to manage what you got better. You want love in your merit? Then you got to forgive and learn how to love and seek God that he give you that abiding, aboding love. Hmm. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit in me. That's Psalms 51 and 10. Cast me not away from thy presence. Take not thy Holy Spirit. Do you know last night and this morning that I was attacked with the thoughts in my mind that, Lord, I, I don't feel you. I don't feel your presence, Lord. And I had to humble myself and say, Lord, I, I, this lesson frightens me. This lesson is difficult because I need deliverance. I need healing. I need the manifestation of your word to be fulfilled in my life. There are people who question and have concerns. See the manifestation of glory in your life and all of our lives. Because I'm just representing you. I'm a microcosm or microscopic view of, of mankind. We all are. We're all in the same boat. We all got the same father. We're all fitly joined together. We're all one race. And God is calling us to restore us, returning to me the joy of salvation. I want to be saved. The joy of salvation is to know that I am saved and I am filled with the Holy Spirit. And I, I've been delivered from hate and bitterness and resentment. I, I, my biggest prayer right now for somebody who's like me is that just to have more faith to believe. To, to stop doubting ourselves and trust God even more. I see the, the, the unbelief and the lack of confidence is not having enough faith in God because you are in the way, Anton. Mm, thank you, Holy Ghost. <laughs> you ain't got to send a psychiatrist. I know what I'm saying. That's, that's the Holy Ghost telling me get out of his way. I've allowed you to go through this because I'm perfecting something in you. I'm allowing your children to go through so they will come to know me for themselves. You can't deliver them. I just keep praying for them. Keep speaking truth to them. Speak loving them. Speak words of encouragement to them. Lead them to Jesus by simply you following. Follow me as we follow Jesus together. I'll follow you too. If you're following Jesus, I'll listen to you. Hallelujah. So the Psalms 42 is the heart panted the water brook, so panted my soul after the, 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 the heart is a deer. And he's saying, he's using this analogy, and if we go to page five, we're not going to finish all this. It's just too much. Time to cry out for God. Nothing stops a fight like the father coming home, daddy coming home. And, and so what always came to mind was Second Chronicles on page five, Second Chronicles. And, and, it, and, and if my people which are called by my name, we got to call out to God. We got to cry out to God. We have to increase prayer in our in our homes. We have to increase Bible teaching in our home. We we've got to take quiet meditation and and set aside time just to make God priority number one for the rest of our lives across the world in the body of Christ in your home. So when you come to church, you're already looking for the more of Jesus. And, and so the pastor will be on another plane, too, because the anointing is quickening, because God is not a respecter of persons. 
But if, if, the, if the people in the church are 3,000 of y'all, 50,000 of y'all, or 30,000 of y'all, and you haven't been in the Word, and you're not getting enough of it in a half an hour. That's why I love the, the teaching of this. We watch TV for two and a half, three hours, and put it on pause, go to the bathroom, and come back. And don't let it be a championship basketball, football, baseball, track, soccer. What? A, a, a concert? You stand on your feet for three, four hours in line. But you can't praise God. Something's out of order. Isaiah 42 says that saith the Lord, he created the heavens and stretched forth, stretched them out, that spread the earth, that which cometh out of it. He that giveth breath unto the people, unto it, the spirit of them that walk therein. I, the Lord, have called thee. This is Isaiah telling us that God is calling you today. And then I drop down, it says, Jesus, the bread of the world. America is hungry. People are hungry for the Lord. Jesus is the bread of life. In chapter two, and I was going to print this, and I said, no, I'll just tell you all, if you get a chance, if you really want to know what this is about, this hunger and the bread is Jesus. Jesus is the bread of life. And John 6.35 reminds us, and Jesus said, then I am the bread. So if there's some stale bread, it's because Jesus ain't stale. He's new every day. Every second of the day, he got something new for you. Because he's the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. So there's nothing new under the sun with God. The staleness is you. You ain't been with him. He's standing all around you. Look at the beauty of the holiness all around you. In your worst situation, there's somebody else whose situation is even worse. My mother taught us that as children. I don't care how bad it is for you. Don't you ever forget that somebody else that's got just as bad, if not even worse, Anton, uh, Aaron, uh, Shimon, Tally, Berlin, James, Josh, all of you children, all of you, Anton Jr., don't ever think just because hard times hit you all that is, you know, no. You could live in the ghetto, but the ghetto ain't in you. The hate ain't in you. You weren't raised with that. And so if you got bitterness in you and unforgiveness and you don't like somebody because of what you heard and you don't even know that person and you're being judged, take the moat out your eyes, people of God. Grow up and get off the milk and stop being satisfied with just asking for some blessings and running around talking about, look what God gave me. And have no intimacy, no relationship with God and can't stand up for nothing against truth and righteousness and won't speak truth to people. That don't make you have to fight everybody, hate everybody. There are people in this world that need you, need your experience to let, the, let them know, I've been down. I want to show you, I want you to know how the Lord brought me out. I, I want you to know that it was what you're seeing. If, you, if you're seeing somebody that's, been, that's successful and you haven't seen the backside of it, you haven't seen the backstory, you haven't seen the, the, the miry clay, the, the muck and the mire that they've been through, the challenges that they had to overcome, the persecution, the hatred, the rejection that they had to go through, the delays that they had to go through. For I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. I come to do the will of the Father to teach this word. I come to share with you and ask you to do the will of the Father that sent you. What he sent you to do? I don't know. And I know it's to spread the gospel. What else? You have to ask him what your plan is, what his plan is for you. Peter on page six, and then we're closing. Servants, be subject to your master with all fear. See, it says God, we, your people, we need you. We need you. But servants, people of God, call them slaves. Servant of God, be subject to the master. Be subject to God, people. Be willing to, to, to bow down and worship God. Be, be willing to, to confess regular, daily. Even the negative thoughts that you get, the fear that you get, the high-minded and the wholeness, the, the pride that we have, the self-righteousness, whatever that is, ask God to deliver you from it. Philippians goes on and says that, brethren, I count myself not to, uh, to, to apprehend. I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind. You can't move on to do the will of God if you're still holding on to 10 years ago of pain 
and unforgiveness. Everybody not going to like you, so stop trying to have everybody like you. That ain't going to happen. That ain't going to ever happen. Make sure that you're in love with Jesus and he's strengthening you, that you don't need to depend on validating. Nobody needs to validate you. you. You trust in God. Be trusting the power of God in you. And you're humble enough to say, Lord, I, I need you to help me with that. Whatever your weaknesses are, God, deliver us from it. God, help us with it. This, this is today's lesson about the presence of God. There ain't no shortcut either. Ain't no way around this. It's going to cost you something. It's going to cost you to be broken. I'm not going to, I'm not going to sugarcoat that. You're going to get broke. If you're going to live in this world, God's going to let you go through something to humble you, but it's time for his glory so he can show you more because we only see in part. We can only write the vision of what he gives us that there's so much more and when he tells you to go, you just got to trust him and obey. Lean not to thine own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge God. For he will strengthen you. And he will direct your path. Peter 1, 15, 16. But as he which hath called you is holy, so you be holy. And, and, and God, that's what he's doing when he's purging you. He's working something out. He's pulling something off. But he wants to perfect in you. Be ye holy for he's holy. That won't be a finished work till you get to heaven in a glorified body. This body ain't going to heaven, man. Your wife ain't going to know you when you get up there. This is going to be a glorified body. You're going to have this mind because this mind is flesh. The spirit, your soul is going back to God. Your soul is going back to God. Are you ready? Are you asking God, please, Lord, help me keep my name written in your book. Show me to do your will. Don't render evil for evil. Don't rally and rally. But know that you can inherit the kingdom of God by calling on the name of Jesus and being obedient. Love thy neighbor as thyself. But he says first, love the Lord thy God. With all the heart, mind, and soul, he'll help you do that. He'll help you to love your neighbors and your enemies and to pray for them and give them water. Just fight your battle. Vengeance is not mine. It's the Lord's. <laughs> Vengeance is mine, save the Lord. They don't belong to you. So I pray that this lesson is the presence of God touch your life. I, I pray that something that was said for the purpose of his presence is to deliver you, to heal you, to draw you, to strengthen you, to lead you, to guide you, to make you a helper and a doer of God's word. His presence is that his presence will be magnified even the more that he be glorified through your life. Something in the sacrifice and the pain is worth it. It's worth it. Is it worth it? Yes. Why? Because it, it shifts me. It changes me. It, it makes me or it transforms me to fall into what's been predestined as an inheritance. Talk about what God has for you. Talk about what God has done for you. But also worship God and praise God. Worship him because he's God and adore him because he created everything for his glory. Praise him because he, he blessed you. Let everything have breath. Praise ye the Lord. But live for him because it brings him glory. And someday we'll get home and he'll say, well done, my faithful servant. I shall wear a crown. I shall wear a crown when it's all over. <laughs> glory. When it's all. That's that, that's that's. Oh, I pray that's what I hear one day that he'll say, well done. I pray that you hear God say to you, welcome home. And you don't have to wait to die. He'll, he'll give you signs. He'll speak to you in the midnight hours. He'll rock you in the middle of the night in the cradle of his arms. That's the kind of father we serve. That's the kind of God. He shows up. So when you feel like you can't go on, just say, thank you, Jesus, for 
for having so much faith in me. Thank you, Jesus, for having so much faith in your people that you trust us even when we don't trust ourselves. Thank you, Jesus, that in, the, in, the, in our doubts, we draw closer to you and you still love us even more. Thank you, God, for your grace that you give us so much. Thank you, God, for your mercy and closing that your mercy didn't give us what we deserve. Thank you. Thank you for Jesus. God bless you. Next week, next week, next week's lesson. Next week's lesson is on the bottom of page six. And next week's lesson, I'm pulling it out right now, brothers and sisters in Christ, forgive me. <laughs> uh, so page six. Um, next week's lesson, I'm trying to get there. Next week's lesson, oh, I also gave you a link to look up some other scriptures. And there's really some beautiful scriptures that fit into the text of the lesson on, on this um, God be with us. Um, stop. Uh, next week, next week, uh, next week's lesson is uh, chapter nine, chapter nine. Um, I didn't put it in my notes, so bear with me. Chapter nine, dismantle, dismantle your glory. Woo dismantle your glory. In other words, you ain't got none. And so he's just saying, let go and let God. <laughs> So this is gonna be a this is gonna be a rough one. So it's gonna be good. He's gonna, gonna help us self-examine ourselves again. Self-examine yourself again and again and again. God bless you. Thank you everyone for this on. I don't know if anybody has a word or a comment or or anything God has given you to share any announcements. Uh, raise your hand, clap, do something. But God bless you. I'll see you next week. We only got three more weeks. Uh, we do chapter nine. And then 10, we're going to be off the week of Thanksgiving. Yeah, I, I, we need to take that time. And then we'll be back from December 7th. So we'll be back next week, the, the 16th. And then the 23rd, we won't be on. And we'll come back on the 30th. And then we'll end on the 7th. God bless you. Love you with the love of Jesus. And anything you can do about it, spread some more love. Peace, everybody. Bye-bye. Um, God bless you, Brother James. Get some rest. God bless you, Sister Willamay. God bless you, Emma. And God bless you all. God bless you, Charlie May, Naomi. Hallelujah. And Sister Emma, peace and blessings to everybody. Those of you that are on Facebook looking before I go, uh, you can visit us at ajsministry.net, ajsministry.net. And if you'd like to sow a seed, please do so. The information is on the website and on our Facebook page. God bless you. Peace and blessings. Till we meet again. Bye-bye.